Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about what to test. And I think this is a very, very important part in testing. And it's maybe even one of the more difficult things besides the testing itself. And, you know, you will easily find yourself in a situation where you are in doubt whether to test something or not. And that's why I have right here everything with a strike through because of course it would sound very nice that you uh, test everything but I can tell you straight away that that will take a lot of time uh, a lot of frustration and it will cost a lot of money as well especially if you are um, well not working like for yourself for your own application but for someone else you know they, they are just not going to be able to pay the money to have like their whole application tested. And then still, you know, you can have like a code coverage uh, of 100%, which is uh, reflecting the amount of lines of code that are being tested in your code base, but that still does not guarantee that your app is working fine. So, you know, it's definitely a trade-off, but uh, you know, you should never aim to test everything, right? That's a really, really bad idea. So, what I put right here is some points and that is kind of like the test priority, which would make the most sense if you would ask me. So the first thing you want to focus on are the high value features. And that might sound a little vague, but think about it. Every application is built with a purpose. And, you know, there are most of the time, a lot of features and applications, but there are some that are more important than others. You know, they bring most value, often most money to the table. Um, you know, think about it. Let's say um, GoFundMe, right? What's the most important thing for them? Well, obviously for people to, to find, um, you know, things they can fund and actually do the funding. Uh, think about Facebook, what would be their most important feature? probably watching the timeline where the ads are being shown and that's what makes Facebook money. Um, think about some other application, uh, I don't know, like an e-commerce shop, right? What's the most important thing? Well, for the users to actually make a purchase, right? Those are the high value features um, and those should have always the highest priority. And often you want to um, test these things with end-to-end -end tests, right? So you um, most of the time want to follow a sort of happy path. So imagine that uh, a user comes to your e-commerce shop, you know, you want them to be able to see the product, to add it to their cart, to then maybe be prompted to log in or register, and then eventually, you know, go back to their cart um, after a login or successful uh, sign up, um, and then eventually that they, that they can pay for their product, right? That's uh, that's a very important feature for, for such an application. So uh, we will be doing that with, uh, most of the time with end-to-end -end tests, doing the happy path. So there's also what people would call the sad paths, because think about um, the example of the e-commerce shop, right? Let's imagine that the user uh, adds, I don't know, like 50 items to their card but the maximum amount of people can buy is 10 pieces, right? This is more like a um, sad path, a sad flow you want to test. And this is what you could consider being the edge cases in those high value features. So just, you know, other things that most people won't do, but that can happen. They also should have, um, you know, a lot of priority. The third thing is things you know that are easy to break. Um, and of course you can say, well, that's that's already a bad thing if you know that things are easy to break, but maybe you've been building uh, or working on an application for a couple of months or years, and you just have seen that a certain part of the application is very fragile. And um, well, maybe then it's time to, you know, put the work in and, and make it solid, but sometimes you know, there are just fragile parts in an application, you know, you know, you, you, there's not always something you can do to fix it. So if you know, like, like these weak points in your app, it's also good to write tests for them 
because, you know, especially if they are important, you want to have that tested and uh, want to get notified when things go wrong. So, and the fourth point is what I would call basic React testing, starting with the most valuable components first. And I call this basic React testing because if you've got like point one, two, and three covered, you already have, you know, uh, a lot of uh, bang for your buck, so to speak, right? You have, uh, you have a good starting point. And I think if you've got that in place and you have the budget and time to, um, to add more tests, then you should start, you know, adding like more like general tests. And for let's imagine React applications, you want to test things like user interactions. So on click events or unsubmit events is a very important thing, but also something like conditional rendering, right? And most of the times we're doing this based on props or, or a certain state that could either live in, in, con in the context or in uh, like based on what is in cache um, in React Query, right? Based on these things, we might want to conditional render stuff. It's also good to test those kind of things. And then the last thing is what I would call algorithms and custom hooks. So that's pretty much all the kind of util functions you are importing into your, um, your component. And it's often also a good uh, thing to test those. And of course there's, you know, you can go beyond that and, and test even more. But I think if you're, you know, testing your React app, these are the things that are um, most important. And um, of course, you got to keep in mind that right there, you have to focus on the most valuable components first, right? So uh, maybe there are some components that are, you know, very tightly coupled together with those high value features. Let's say you have a, um, I don't know, let's say a, a, a shopping card component. Well, that's one that has more priority over, let's say the light to dark mode team switcher on your app. You know, that's more like a nice to have. And of course, if you have the time and budget to write tests for it, that's great, but it should not have like the most priority. So the next thing is about what not to test, right? And generally speaking, you do not want to write tests that are not focused toward how your app will be used. And I think we had a bit of a mind shift in the, in the community where, um, you know, previously a lot of people were testing so-called implementation details. So people were, for example, testing that when a user clicked on a button, whether the state internally would have changed um, or the props would have changed throughout your application. And even though that, well, you could say is nice to know, I much rather want to know if, you know, actually the conditional rendering took place, right? Because that's what my user is interested in. My user is not interested in, you know, the internal state that lives in my application. Uh, I mean, like nine out of 10 users probably don't even know there is something like state in an application. So, you know, why even bother uh, testing it? And also a big problem with testing so-called implementation details is that those tests tend to break um, when you are, are refactoring your application. So let's imagine you have an application that uh, uses a lot of Redux for the state management. And then, you know, someone comes in and say, well, let's do like more with, uh, I don't know, like, uh, like props and component composition and the context API, like we've talked about before, then if you're going to change that, probably a lot of tests will break, but maybe your app will still be working fine. So that's, um, a false negative, right? So your test is failing, but your app is still working as um, as you want it to. And you can also have false positives where when you're refactoring your application, your test will still, you know, tell you that everything is working fine, but your UI is not showing the right stuff because you didn't write tests for it. So that's why you don't want to test implementation details and always try to focus on testing the way your user would use your application. When you are in doubt about what to test, always keep in mind that you want to focus on testing real use cases. 
nor anything else is just a waste of time. And what I mean with real use cases is simply flows and they can either be big or small, but things that your users will really, you know, actually do with your application, right? Those are the things you want to be confident about that they are working. So that was it for this video and I'd like to see you in the next one.